you know, New Year's Eve. Yeah. And, you know, I'm from New York, and even in Florida, you watch the New York ball. And yeah. even in Texas, to be honest, which I'm watching two New Year's. Yeah. Now I'm watching For sure. two balls drop, right. more or less. Yeah. What's up all you auto enthusiasts out there? Buckle up for a unique experience where we have custom vehicles and their owners share the spotlight in our studio. Have you ever seen a cool ride and wondered who the owner is or what the history is behind the build? On today's episode of Tailpipe Talk, we'll be speaking with John. He goes by NYInstaller2 on Instagram. Again, that's NYInstaller2 on Instagram. We'll get to know more about John and his 2021 Ram T-Rex. Yeah. John, welcome to the studio. Thank you. How it's you been doing? a pleasure. Uh, you know, obviously I've seen a couple of your uh, episodes already and, uh, you know, I hit you up and I was like, man, that's something I want to do. I've never done it before. And uh, I was like, yeah, let's do this. I'm glad you, know? you did, man. I, yeah, it's, it's awesome it's, to have you it's on. It's unique. You know, I have a story just like anybody else. Yeah. You know, I may not have a custom vehicle, but right. there's plenty of custom that I do to these vehicles, and we'll dive deeper into this one a little bit. Awesome, can't wait. <laughs> and then backtrack it a little yeah. bit. So this is, there's a little little things that took place. But yeah, um, I currently work at Starwood Motors in Farmers Branch, Texas. Uh, my role is pretty much the Mopar performance technician. So there, I've been working with Mopar for so many years that it just, it's been a, a transition for me. And, you know, the one thing that probably draws me to Mopar is it's literally considered the redhead stepchild. It gets uh, everything last. For yeah. GM, they get everything first. And the funny part is, is that sometimes when we upgrade these things, they're getting Ford and GM parts. And that's okay. You know, I, I, I'm very, uh, I love the, the big three. I love, you know, everything American. Yeah. So, you know, naturally I'm, you know, going to persuade to an American car. Sure, sure. So, but yeah, this uh, this T-Rex, it's uh, brand new. It's got 2,500 miles on it. Um, you know, we'll dive into it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't want to give it away too early. Well, before we get into the T-Rex, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. So, like I said, I've been doing this Mopar thing forever. Yeah. You know, it is, uh, it is got me on TV. Uh, and it's not just the Mopar thing that's got me on TV. One of my biggest uh, things I would say about me is my electrical skills and everything that I have is self-taught, you know, which you Very can't cool. find a lot. Yeah. You, you really can't. You can't say, oh yeah, well, I went to high school. I went to college or, or whatever. I went to trade school. Yeah. Well, unfortunately there's nothing wrong with any of that, Yeah. but I didn't do any of it, you know, and, uh, I taught myself, like I, I found a, a problem and I wanted to find the solution. Right. So when I first started out, there was no real Google. Internet was dial up, you know, right. <laughs> you couldn't, there was no, you can't just, you don't know smart, smartphones. I mean, I remember like Nokia phones and yeah. Motorola flip phones. Yeah. You're not getting the information off that. So you had to figure it out. Right. And there was some internet. I remember a website called like the 12 volt something. It might've been, that's it. It might've okay. just been the yeah. 12 volt. And, uh, I don't exactly remember what got me into it, but I think I wanted to like wire some lights or something. Yeah. Or I wanted something to flash when something else came off. Gotcha. You know, I, I don't gotcha. really know, but yeah. my biggest thing is the electrical. Um, and that I believe is what actually landed me on TV uh, besides the Mopar stuff. You know, gotcha. it's, I've always been in the car scene and I've been working since I was probably 14. Yeah. And on, I'm almost 39 now. So, and I've been hitting the grind since. You know, like nonstop. Yeah. And uh, it's cool. Like, I love working on Mopars. It's something that I gravitated to. And it's not just the mechanical or the electrical. Uh, the diagnostic systems in the cars really, you know, they're some of the best diagnostics in any car period is in a Mopar. Or it derived from Mercedes. So I think those guys know what they're doing. Yeah, ab so. absolutely. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they do. So yeah, I mean, I live here. I've only lived in Texas. Uh, we're coming up on four years. I lived here, I moved here September or August, 2017. So we're 21, um, coming up on four years. I came here for TV and I liked Texas so much that I just stayed. Yeah. You know, I literally sold my house in Florida just recently actually. Yeah. And I stayed here and it's been 
some of the stuff I've seen here, I've never seen anywhere else. And I've lived in New York. I was born in New York. I lived there until 2004. And then I went from New York to uh, South Florida uh, in 2004. And then from 04 to, I think, 16, I moved to Central Florida. And then I was barely in Central Florida. Yeah. But uh, there's things that in, in both of those other locations prior to Texas, there's things that I see here that makes me want to just my roots are set yeah like if this if if times were better right now i'd own a house already you know just unfortunately with the housing market as it, it is, is crazy it's, it's yeah even rentals is crazy yeah i mean i i was lucky enough to get the house that i have right now as a rental but um i want to buy like renting sucks yeah <laughs> yeah like yeah. I, you know I, I there's so many reasons why i hate <clears throat> renting but just the money the money alone so. yeah so having been here the last four you Four years you said that it's so different and you see stuff here that is not in new york and florida tell us about that like what what's... so some of the things i see you know like uh you know obviously new york you got the ocean you know there's no replacement for the ocean it's right. just is what it is i love it i miss it all the time uh florida same deal you got right. the ocean but some of the things i like here in texas is local facilities like um uh truck yard you know, truck okay, yard's yeah, yeah. pretty badass place. Yeah. You bring your dogs if you want. Yep. I got two dogs at home. Well, currently I have five dogs at home, but my two dogs at home, uh, I, I think that uh, they will come with me, and they're sure. both pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but truck yard, you got um, Legacy Hall. Yeah. Legacy Hall's another that, that's one. That's amazing, right? That's, that is, like, the first time first time I went there, I was like, wow, like, this is awesome. Yeah. You know, now it's a little different because of the whole pandemic stuff. And, you know, they actually charge you to see some of the concerts, right. some of the concerts. Right. But just that whole venue in, in it, at it in itself. Yeah. I'm like, man, I've never experienced this before. Yeah. Well, that's where you go on a date night because you walk in like, babe, what yeah, do you want to yeah, eat? Yeah, what do you want to eat? <laughs> pick anything you want. It's yeah. in Legacy Hall. Damn, so yeah. I, yeah. Well, Truck Yard's pretty cool, too, because yep. it's the same deal. It's like, yeah, you have your steak facility and alcohol and bars and, right. and whatnot. And then you have like three or four trucks to right. choose from. Right. And hey, if you're with somebody who can't find something to eat there, <laughs> uh, I, I got nothing to say. Like that's it, like I can't do nothing about My it. My wife you know? and I frequent both those places. They're, yeah, they're, they're both, great places. So stuff yeah. like that, or even like in Austin, float in the river. Sure, yeah. Never done that before yeah. in my life. And uh, Super cool. I went down there and it wasn't the Guadalupe, I think, uh, San Marcos. Okay. I went to the San Marcos yeah. and I had an amazing time. Yeah. And just stuff like that has got me here and I'm done. Like, I don't even want to go anywhere else. Yeah. Like the opportunity would have to be amazing to go somewhere else. And it's, and it's so crazy too, because I've been out here since 2004, right? And coming from California, very touristy. Like yeah. there's tons I, of stuff. I, I'd have to say I've never even really been to California. Yeah. So you got the Fisherman's Wharf, the Gold Gate Bridge, Alcatraz. You know, it's touristy. Sure, I mean, it's, sure. you know. Well, that's you, Florida. That's Orlando. Yeah. Where I came from. So you come here. There's no. <laughs> no. There's no, no. You no. got tourists, but there's no tourist locations. Really. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, and got, I've said this before. And I think we the only place that is historical in Dallas that's really it's historical the, the i'm not talking okay exactly yeah. exactly i'm not talking about monuments and you know buildings and stuff but people go there to yeah. see that x in the street yeah and I, see I where he got shot there, you like, know like two weeks ago i was just driving by <laughs> that's dallas's tourist attraction that's it oh my god <laughs> like yeah there's the grassy knoll you know it's yeah like, i you mean know, but for real think about anything else i yeah, can't the think anything. Depository you know stuff. the the oh what is the name of the um, the, the building ball, with the, the globe. What is the yeah, name I don't of it? Know what it's I'm, called? Reunion Tower. Reunion that's Tower. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank it's you, pretty, Alex. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. Like uh, like the first year I was here, and it was uh, you know New Year's Eve. Yeah. And you know I'm from New York, and even in Florida, you watch the New York Ball, and yeah. even in Texas, to be honest, which I'm watching two New Years. Yeah. I'm to watching For sure. two balls drop more right or less. yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah so we, we can take that out of context right <laughs> uh, so yeah i mean it's really weird seeing you know that's the the whole thing and i think the first year they did an insane fireworks show yeah you know on yeah. so i watched it twice i yeah. watched the new york ball drop and then i watched the uh this uh what it reunion, reunion tower, tower yeah. go crazy and all yeah. the fireworks and I was like, man, it's different. 
but it's still good. Like it's 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 a good difference. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure there's uh, different states, different areas have their own thing. Uh, I haven't been too many places here in Texas. Uh, I'm trying to. I've been to Lubbock, Texas. I've been to Austin, Houston. Uh, been to uh you know a couple of things with the tv shows have really taken me all over yeah in fact before tv i was never west of anything on the east coast oh. <laughs> <laughs> like i literally traveled from new york to florida a couple yeah. times and i uh i think uh little inwards on like virginia and stuff was like yeah. my furthest west ever and now i've been I've been to California. I've been to the southern area, uh, Johnson Valley, California, but I've never been. I've been to Compton too, but yeah. that's <laughs> something else. But that was sh all short terms. Like most yeah. of the time, if I've been to California prior to TV, I was at the airport, and that's not really in California. No, no, you know, not so. at all. I went to Vegas for a trade show when I was younger. I'm like, I've been to Vegas. No, I flew in. I okay, flew so out. Okay, so hold on, hold on. I was not in Vegas. <laughs> okay, so I've been to Vegas a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely <laughs> been to Vegas a couple of times. Uh, so I worked with a company in Florida called Diablo Sport. Uh, we designed gasoline and diesel tuning systems. Oh yeah, I'm, now I I'm say familiar with that. Diablo Sport is not what it used to be. Gotcha. You know, nowadays that it's it's owned by Holly Corporation, and that's not the problem. Uh, they merged us with PowerTech, which PowerTech is um, uh, Edge and Superchips. And uh, once that gotcha. happened, things fell off real fast. Yeah. And it's essentially, it's just getting worse at this point. And it's, it sucks because we used to have a facility in Delaware Beach, Florida, and it was more or less a closed facility. People didn't just walk up. You couldn't. It was right. closed, locked down. Right. Uh, the only thing that was open was the garage door, and that's because for people smoking. Sure. But... You know, the things that we accomplished in a short group of people in tight quarters, more or less, yeah. was crazy. And now it's just like, yeah, now it's nothing to talk about. And that's a shame. Yeah, you know? that's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. But working at Diablo Sport, I was part of the crew that developed the PCM unlocking process for the 2015 and up Chrysler's. Um, anything 2015 and up actually requires you to open the computer. And now it's my side gig. I mean, literally, like, I do... PCMs every week. I couldn't even tell you. It's like sometimes with the pandemic, it's actually increased. Like my yeah. year so far is is shot up. You know, that crazy. I do uh, I do all PCM unlocks for the major tuning companies. Yeah. Uh, I won't tell you who they are. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, I do PCM unlocks for them. And uh, for Starwood, where I work, it's it's awesome because we don't have to send them out. You right. Know, I work on the majority of the cars that I work on are 2015 and newer. So that's cool. every single one of them needs an unlock. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like it's, you know, I keep it separate. Right. You know, like I get paid to do the wrenching on the car yeah. at Starwood, but the PCM unlock is completely a separate entity. And yeah. I basically do one, submit a, a uh, invoice to them and they pay me, you know, and it's, oh, that's it's completely cool. separate. It's pretty that's cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> and Starwood, I, I've, I think I've been over their location some time ago. Um, but they, they sell some pretty high-end vehicles, yeah, right? So custom they, stuff they as well. They do sell custom vehicles, yeah. but they also, I mean, the, uh, the, I, I think the, the, the main owners are, it's kind of like their hobby thing. Gotcha. So it's like, um, that's, it's a hobby, but it's also a shop. Gotcha. And it's pretty crazy because, you know, we got some Ferraris in there. Yeah. We, we, uh, they had like Teslas in there and stuff like that. And it's, it's. And then, you know, I would say Starwood ha is known mostly for the Jeeps stuff they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, it's the first place that I've worked at that I talk to everybody without even trying. Yeah. You know, some of the places, TV shows and stuff like that, somewhat of an outcast. Right. And it sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know, now, I now I saw the shirt. It's Starwood, Starwood Speed Shop, right? Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> did they change their name or is that just a, a division that's the, of this? That's the division of okay. Starwood Motors. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Starwood Motors is a company. Starwood Speed Shop is basically my division uh, where cool. I concentrate on Mopar. Yeah. You know, I do other awesome. things, um, but my my forte is definitely Mopar. Yeah. So that's what I do. I mean, every day I'm either making Hellcats fast or Hellcats faster. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. Or like right now I'm doing a, uh, a Magnuson 
supercharger on a 392 Dodge Charger. Nice. You know, nice. and I, I do that stuff all the time. You yeah. Know, some of it's repetitive. Some of it's, you know, it's like, oh, okay, this thing is fast. Cool. Next. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, then there's um, one car I did recently for a YouTuber. Her name is, her YouTube name is the Real Nova 797. Yeah. And uh, she has uh, a, um, I think it's 20 or 21 um, Dodge Charger Red Eye. Yeah. So those things are fast already. Right, right. But now we're pumping out, I, I don't want to give away her numbers, but yeah. we're pumping out some massive boost. Yeah. And that car was the first car in a long time that put a smile on my face. That's cool, man. Like, you know, That's and cool. I was like, man, this thing is awesome. And it's E85. It's, yeah. Because the cars start off pretty good, it yeah. doesn't take a lot to get there. But man, that car was the first car in a long time. I was like, yeah, I need to build more of these. That'd be cool. You know, I was like, yeah, and I do. I mean, I have, uh, I have red eyes with magnuson's on them. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. So let me ask you a question. People can come to you through Starwood Motors. Well, Starwood, I'm, or are you a separate entity that can take on customer vehicles? Well, how does that work? So. Starwood Motors is a shop. It's a legit shop. So okay. when you want me to work on your car, the uh, you go through the shop. You know, it's like interesting. A, okay, it's, it's like a it's it's partly a dealership, but it's also you know custom work. Okay, we do a lot of custom Jeeps stuff like that. We did like uh, well, not we. I wasn't part of the team. I did help on it, but uh, they did like this uh, Toyota Prius uh, hunting vehicle. Okay. It's completely crazy. Yeah. But the reason they did that is because a Prius makes no noise. Yeah. It drives. It was a hybrid, not a complete, you know, right. electric vehicle, right. but it makes basically no noise. It lasts forever because the gas motor is like a 1.6 or 1.8. Yeah, no, that's it's smart. Super, super small. That's smart. Absolutely. And they're super quiet. Yeah. And because when you're creeping, I'm pretty sure unless the battery is low, it's all electric. Yeah. And so they built that car and... Uh, uh, Starwood also has their own bedliner style material. It, uh, I don't know full logistics of it, mm -hmm. but it's like uh, it's got like aluminum oxide stuff like that. In Interesting. It. And normal bedliner material, like even if I pop my my uh, my tailgate and I take a key, I could scratch my bedliner. Yeah. Well, they're doing full paint jobs with this material, and you can't scratch it for nothing. No kidding. Like wow. you can't scratch it. You. Uh, it's it it's available in any color you can think of. Yeah. So it's uh, like I can literally take the T Rex here, and it'll it's not a fine finish. It's definitely like rough. It's yeah. It's rough. Course, but yeah. that's a bedliner material. Right. But there's sure. different ways to do it. Yeah. As well, like the the owner has like a F two fifty, I believe, and it's all white, just like the car was originally. I think it was originally, but it it feels totally different. Interesting. You know, it's, it's not as as coarse as like a bedliner yeah. material would be. But honestly, it's it's a process that's just like painting a car. You have to pull the paint down, pull the clear down, you know, create adhesion, and then spray it. And it, the cars have to come fully apart. And wow. it just lays down so smooth. And like I said, they could do any color. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the things like I'm even with my the t-rex i'm like yeah maybe i want to do that <laughs> because road grime nothing yeah like it yeah. literally uh you can wash it off like uh most of the time there is no you can use soap and stuff but right. it's kind of like you're gonna need like 30 sponges on one car because it's gonna it's grind just, it down. absolutely but, absolutely but yeah that's it, uh, pretty cool it's pretty badass i didn't realize i you know i always thought starwood motors and this is just me not knowing was uh a dealership is, is what I thought of it, custom cars, high end cars. I didn't realize customers could bring their cars in there for performance mods. I didn't yeah, realize that. Yeah, so that's that. what we do. That's I mean, cool. We, uh, I, I haven't been at Starwood very long. Yeah. I was with another company that through the pandemic and other things uh, went belly up. So yeah. there was a few of us that transitioned from that company to Starwood. Gotcha. And at the previous company, I was the Mopar guy as well. I yeah. did the same thing. I just transitioned to a new location. Yep. Um, and I definitely am in a fishbowl somewhat at the location because I'm right up in front. Right. I have two lifts, whereas most everybody have to kind of share lifts. Uh, we're changing that. We're going to do some remodeling and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun ride, but at the same time, it's right now, especially in Texas, it's super hot. So I lose like 10 pounds every day. I don't know how you all do that stuff in the shop. Yeah. Man, it's that's tough. tough. Like I have a little, it, uh, I have a little portable AC that I can stand in front of every once in a while when I'm yeah. when I'm just absolutely overheating. 
but uh, it's just a lot of water. I mean, you're even though you're drinking gallons of water per day, yeah, you're still pissing brown. I mean, yeah. you're still <laughs> you're, you're still dehydrated and. Um, but you know the Texas stuff. I've been here almost four years. I've been through the heat. It's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, it's a dry heat compared to the East Coast, where sure. it's very humid. Humid, yeah. So yeah, that's what brings me to Texas. I mean, and you know, I actually came to Texas for TV. Very and cool. TV lasted a couple of years, and yeah. then I liked it, so I just picked on a regular job. Yeah. You know, and I started off. I actually started off after TV ended. I started off at a. A local Dodge dealership in Love Field. Uh, right now, it's called Uptown Dodge. Uh, before it was Metroplex. Okay. Um, DFW Metroplex. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, <clears throat> pretty cool. I mean, I I I won't say I outperformed most of the techs, but I definitely outperformed, unfortunately. You yeah. Know? But that that comes with all I've learned. Sure. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Throughout the years, absolutely. all the things I learned. A lot I've of learned. experience. Uh, but I really didn't like Fiat's. So I was yeah. like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> Fiat's like, I was like, no, like these things are thrown together with bubble gum. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm out. <laughs> Fiat's are thrown together with bubble gum. Uh, yeah, and, and it was just like, uh, no, yeah. I was, I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. So when you, uh, when you started on the TV show, how did you know about the TV show when you were in Florida? Okay, so how did that? How did so that? So the way transition? it happened was. Uh, Back in, I believe, 2015, Gas Monkey Garage was doing a Hellcat motor. Now, remember, 2015 is when the Hellcat motor first came, first correct. came out. Correct, correct. In fact, the Hellcat motor that Gas Monkey Garage used was in a non-production vehicle. So it was a vehicle that didn't even technically have a VIN. It was an engineering vehicle. Gotcha. So essentially what they did was they took that motor out and put it in a uh, 67 Dodge Dart. Gotcha. So they, had, they couldn't get it running. Yeah. So um, they had another tuning, another company come out there and they exhausted efforts. And at the time, Holly had owned us, uh, Diablo Sport. So Holly owned Diablo Sport. So they naturally contacted Holly and was like, hey, will your dominator work to run this car? Because TV doesn't wait for nobody. Right. You know, oh, yeah. It, the crazy part about, about Gas Monkey Garage, and I've learned later on, is that the cars are actually built in four weeks or actually built in eight weeks. Yeah. And that's it. That's all yeah. you get. Uh, you might have some time to finish finish up some loose ends, but as far as the TV schedule is sure. concerned, you're pedal to the metal and building those cars. So anyway, they uh, they contacted Holly looking for a Dominator uh, standalone ECU setup because they could not get that thing to run on a factory ECU. Yeah. And no one, it, it just, the cars just came out. Right. It wasn't even available. Right. Nothing was available. Yeah. Um, in fact, they completely did craziness and ran on E85 and uh, return system pump and all this other crazy fuel cell, the whole nine yards, and they couldn't get it running. Yeah. So they called Holly. Well, Holly says, nah, we don't have nothing, but we, uh, we kind of own this tuning company and Mopar is their thing. So let's, uh, let's get them involved. So they did. They got me and one of the tuner, uh, at the time, um, to talk to them, try to figure out a game plan. And I remember a phone call before we actually came here, me uh, and a, me, the marketing guy and uh, the tuner were on a phone call and it was a phone call that we weren't really supposed to be involved in, but we were, so we were mute the whole time. Like yeah. we didn't say nothing right? except amongst each other. And uh, it was basically like a whole, lurk, a whole lot of circle jerk and stuff going on yeah. with Mopar and they were like, oh, send the car to us and we'll get it running kind of deal. Right. And they didn't have that time. So they called us out. After that phone call, we were on a flight the next morning. And uh, we got there. We got there early, like 9 o'clock. The guys were already hard at work. You know, at the time, things were bad at Gas Monkey. So guys were already had it hard at work. And, um, yeah, we got there and we just rolled in. And that's the first time. Mm, yeah, that was the first time I was on TV. Gotcha. I think. Um but, you know, like we walked in and they were like, no, 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 walk back out. We got to mic you up. We got to start all <laughs> over. Uh, so it was a big deal and it was full production and something about it. Like I was with my coworker. Uh, we aren't friends anymore. Um, but I was with my coworker and he like clammed up in front of the camera. And with me, I was like, well, I can get used to this. So yeah. I was like, okay, you know, and it's new. So you're, you're, um, 
you're kind of like not scared, but you're you're. How should you're, I act? Yeah, where should I put my hands? Yeah, you're jittery. <laughs> you're you're nervous, and you know you're like you don't know anything about it, and so there was like stumbles of voice and everything. But then after the hours passed on, it, you get comfortable. Whereas my coworker never got comfortable. Yeah. He'd be like. Uh, there's there's something called OTF. OTF is it's called on the fly. It's a kind of like an interview after action interview, and so they after everything was done, they did an OTF and like they asked a question and he like drew out the entire answer and they're like, listen, this is TV, we can't have that answer, and I took everything he said and I condensed it into like one sentence and I remember the producer being like, damn, like. How'd that work? <laughs> like, where'd that come from? <laughs> he was like, shit. No, but anyway, they pulled us out to uh, Gas Monkey, and I, uh, I had that car running about six hours. That's you know, incredible. Give or take about yeah. six hours. He's never done it. Now, I knew the computer systems, but I didn't even know what that computer would want in order, and it was the only option. It was factory ECU, or that car is not going down the track. Right, right. And what it was, was they were uh, going after... Uh, roadkill guys. So there was a whole roadkill right. event. Right, I remember watching that episode. Yeah, a whole yeah. roadkill event. And we actually uh, were going to the Silver Dome, and uh, that was where the race was going to take place. Yeah. And uh, so they figured that out, and, or I figured that out, got them running, and uh, the tuner tuned the car, and with the 85 and all those stuff, I'm pretty sure it was the 85. It's been a long time. Yeah. Pretty sure it was. It might have been pump gas. I, I don't remember. Uh, but we got the car running and, and everything fell into place after that for those guys. Right. You know, right. I was just happy to be there. Right. And I was like, yeah, cool. So fast forward a couple of years and Aaron Kaufman left Gas Monkey, which a million people know that. Yeah. So he left Gas Monkey and uh, he needed a wiring guy. And I don't know if I was his first choice or anything like that, but yeah, I ended up being on that show and it was uh, Shifting Gears with Aaron Kaufman on Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. Uh <clears throat> That was a tough time, you was know, hundred percent. It? Yeah. it was a tough yeah. time. Um, I would say that me and my other cast members, you know, Josh Freeman, mm -hmm. he uh, he's a guy that I still regularly talk to, or it's been a while, but I still talk to him. Um, uh, Jeremy Webster, Jason Bowman, uh, these guys were my fellow cast members, and it was a tough time because uh, unfortunately we were lied to to get out there, and um, it sucked, you know, it was, it was hard, it was hot, it was um, a lot of things that it wasn't supposed to be. Now the show, the premise of the show would have been awesome, you know, build these cars and test them. You know, yeah. kind of like, a, kind of like a, you know, Monster Garage and sure, now that's sure. being revived. Yeah. And I'd love to be on that show too. Yeah. You know, I think I can offer those guys a lot of stuff as well. I applied for it, but you know, shit happens. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. The, I would say with that show, the best thing that could have happened was meeting all the people I did sure. and going to locations. Yeah. Getting to those locations was not fun, and it ended, ultimately ended my career with that show. But um, meeting the people and seeing things that I've never seen before. Sure. And sure. we built some cool stuff. You know, yeah. like some of it was supposed to be purpose built. Some of it, like our first car was an international scout. With like, uh, it was like a ultra. It was it was a wannabe ultra four car, and I don't know nothing about ultra four. Sure. But it was like a wannabe ultra four car, and uh, <clears throat> the uh, motor and transmission combination wasn't a good choice. Yeah, it wasn't and a good choice. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching uh, bits of that. A four BT and a and I think it was a six LE trans. Oh really? It was no good. Yeah. I remember the mm -hmm. amount of stuff that mm -hmm. I had to add to the motor, which is a a stupid motor i would say no computers no nothing to get that transmission to even do anything and yeah it was it was and, and then you got cameras in your face every five seconds you know you got mics you can't you got to watch your mouth i mean they'll beep you but you yeah. know they'll be like <laughs> you're just loot, pulling your hair out and uh that that first car was supposed to be a, a relatively fast car but it, it took a hundred days and in the in the tv industry a hundred days that that doesn't really happen. So, but the premise of the car, the premise of the show originally was pretty badass. It, it, it sold me on making the transition from Florida to Texas. Sure. And ultimately it got me on Gas Monkey, which is the next go around. Yeah. 
Um, now, didn't you guys build on uh, shifting gears? Didn't you guys build cars and then Aaron would go out and try them? Like oh, the yeah. big rigs and the yeah, rally the cars big, and the scouts. and The big you know, rig was like, so much fun for me because uh, they were... So what people don't realize is that you're not building one car at once. When it's TV, like you're not building one car at once. So they, uh, they were finishing up the Ultra 4 International Scout mm -hmm. build. And me and uh, Chris Russman, who I think purchased the truck or sold the truck or whatever, I don't remember. But uh, it was him and I, and you know, I learned a lot of fabrication stuff working with the guys that I did over there. Uh, but I wasn't really a fabricator. But I learned how to cope piping to do, you know, cages and stuff like that at both of the TV shows. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we built the semi. The semi was such a fun thing. Like, how cool is that to go was, around a track like drifting a semi? Yeah, basically, it was so cool. That's and, so wild. I mean, there was a lot to it. And the, unfortunately for me, being the electrical guy, you don't get a lot of airtime because electrical is it's a requirement. Most uh, I consider myself like a fireman. Because, like, firemen run towards a fire. Right. Most mechanics run away from electrical. Yeah. And I don't. <laughs> I run right to it. It's the best thing I could say. Sure. It's the best way I can explain it. But it's boring. Like, I, I, get, uh, I get excited when I figure things out. Sure. But it's like, man, this sucks. Sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, but I don't that, like uh, electrical either. I'll do mechanical work. <laughs> I, I'm not into the electrical part. Yeah, the, like uh, even electronics <laughs> in me, I'm like, here, I hand it to my 13 year old. Can you figure that out? Like yeah, yeah, technology yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, just, hey, dude, this notification yeah. popped up. Like, how do I get rid of it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dad, swipe up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> dad, swipe up. <laughs> so simple. So simple. Yeah. 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 Dad, dad, just. There you go. Really? There you go. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm very technologically advanced. So. Besides working with the engine computers, uh, I've done GM stuff as well. Uh, back when I had my, I had a uh, 2013 uh, Cadillac ATS, mm -hmm. and uh, I was the first one to have a full digital cluster. Oh, they really? Don't, they don't come with digital clusters. Yeah. Uh, I had the first digital cluster in an ATS, and then when I got my ATS-V, 2016, I got an ATS-V. I love that car. I miss that car. Uh, but... I, again, had a full digital cluster, one of the first people. I, I think I was the first person to do it. And, excuse me. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, both of those cars, and those cars were both tuned, and, you know, we tested limits on them a couple yeah, times. Yeah, I'm sure. You know. The <laughs> ATSV was so much fun, though. I mean, Cadillac killed it with the 3.6 twin turbo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it could have been better for the, the cost of the car. It could have been better, like, for real, you'd look at the paint, it would fall off. Like, <laughs> Oh, really? Not legit, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. so soft. Yeah, gotcha. And, you know, I think uh, a lot of these companies have transitioned to water-based paint, mm -hmm. and it's just not what it used to be. Yeah. And I know it's environmental and great. You know, I respect this, this earth. We only get one of yeah. them. But it's like, damn, there has to be another way to make it harder. Yeah. Because rock chips, I mean, I remember the first year, like my, I had to repump, uh, repaint the front bumper, and uh, obviously the repaint lasted because it wasn't water based. Yeah. But uh, I was like, man, this seventy-eight thousand dollar car is just falling apart. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. man, fuck that. <laughs> that. That's that would be disappointing for sure. It is. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, uh, it, it's it's been a journey. I mean. I've been working hands-on since I was 14, since I was allowed to get my working papers. Yeah. And it's always hands-on. First, it was a bicycle shop, you know, back in Belmore, New York, uh, which is no longer there. It's closed up probably 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, but from bicycle shop, I even did a, a, a small stint in, like, a grocery store. Like, I worked the cash register, and back in the day, like, it wasn't, like, right now, you go to a grocery store, and let's say you get lemons or something, and there's no sticker on it. Oh, I don't look up. Yeah, you didn't have that. You had a book. <laughs> like, you had to be like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. oh, yeah, that's lemons, but that's not that type of lemon. So, Ch -ch -ch. and keep flipping <laughs> through the book. And, uh, yeah, it, it was interesting. I've done, I've done a lot of stuff, you know. Um, in Florida, when I first moved there, I've done plumbing, HVAC, uh, electrical, uh, ground-up stuff. Like, yeah. starting from the ground. Like, uh I was a job site foreman at the plumbing thing, probably had no business being a job site foreman <laughs> at the time, but I was the most qualified. You know, I was the, the smartest one of the group. And um, 
<clears throat> yeah, it's just interesting. It's interesting how life like just does things to the you. The journey, the yeah. journey, yeah. And my life has been tough, you know, like uh, I, back in the day I used to be really personal, really quiet, but nowadays I'm like, I, I tell anybody who wants to listen. So I grew up in state care, you know, some things happen between my mom and dad. And uh, then as a child, we were neglected from my mother, not my father. My father's a great guy. Uh, I still talk to him regularly, <clears throat> but we got taken away and we grew up in state care from the age of, I think, seven to 17, I was in state care. So, uh, you know, there was a uh, survival of the fittest moments there and I uh, had to grow up fast. And yeah. I would say I didn't have a childhood, <clears throat> you know, for the most part. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, it still makes me a better person. You know, I lived through some tough times. So. Yeah, it's you reflect back on that stuff and then look at you now, right? Like yeah. you turned out okay. You got a solid job, good head on your shoulders. Yeah, and, you know, uh, you know and, and I got a kid. I, I got a 13-year-old daughter named Renee. Uh, and my, at this point, ex-wife, Kristen, yeah. uh, who is an absolute awesome person. Uh, but my daughter is a mini me. She literally looks like me. She uh, has the sass like me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, she's also her mother. And um, thankfully, I, f I finally convinced them to come to Texas. And uh, Very cool. They're living with me right now, which is, uh, <clears throat> it, it's not tough that they're living with me, you know, considering who, Who's going to live with their ex-wife? You know, sure, but sure. Kristen and I are very good friends. Yeah, and we've got each other's back no matter what. That's awesome, man. Um, and and we have a mutual goal. You know, Renee is our mutual goal. We will put everything that we have aside for her. And um, you know, it's something that we've gone above and beyond for. And like I said, they're sleeping. They're uh, living at my house right now. And uh, with everything with the. Uh, the housing market, it's making it tough to yeah. find rentals. Like, no you're doubt. in the housing market, so I am. you know. Yeah, no, real estate's crazy. You put a property crazy. up in 72 hours, it's, it's gone. gone. It's yeah, gone. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It and is. the caveat on it is most rental people don't want dogs or they don't want um, uh, multiple dogs. So yeah. there's <clears throat> there's five dogs in my house right now. I've got my own two. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And I, so I have five dogs. Yeah. And granted, the, the three dogs that came with her, uh, English Bulldog, Great dog, kind of <laughs> dumb, <laughs> love her to death. The only female dog in the house. Yeah. It's four four males yeah. and one female. Uh, then Blue, uh, which is uh, like a Chihuahua, and uh, Seymour, which is a Yorkie. And then I have my Chihuini, yeah. uh, which I love ch I, I love Chihuinis. Uh, and then I have what we believe is a Basinji. So it's like a Chihuahua, uh -huh. and I don't know what a Basinji is. I don't know. You've never, never heard, heard of, of that. Before, I've never heard of that. But that dog is the coolest dog I've ever. Not okay. Let me back up. I had one dog in my life that is non-replaceable. Yeah. Wiggles, which was an English bulldog. Uh, sorry, Wrinkles, which was an English bulldog. My new dog is Wiggles, and he. Uh, That's cool. He is one of the coolest dogs I've ever had, and then, you know, unfortunately, I had a fourth dog in Florida who passed away. But uh, he was he was he was second. Wiggles is third. Yeah. Uh, his name was Buster, and he showed up at my doorstep. No like, kidding. Yeah, yeah, he showed up. So I'm I, <laughs> back to when I didn't have a lift and stuff. You know, everybody else jack stands and working on your back. Yeah. I was working on a. Uh, uh, I was doing an engine swap on a Dodge Magnum, and I had done that too because I had one as well. I had an 06 Magnum, a car that I absolutely love. Yeah. I love the Magnum. I hate that they got rid of it. But um, I was doing an engine swap from like a 2.7 liter to a 3.5, I believe, at that time. Yeah. And I was just finishing stuff up. And I, uh, <clears throat> I had the car up on jack stands. And uh, about an hour earlier, there was this guy who had this dog. And we didn't know anything about him. No leash, no collar, no... Oh, well, he had a leash on, but it was like a lead, not... Yeah. You know, if you know a lead, it's just a piece of rope. Right, with a, with right. A hoop in it. Um, he was walking around the neighborhood, and he was like, hey, is this your dog? And we are like, no, that's not my dog. And I was like, mm, okay. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess the dude let him go, which was pretty shitty on his part. Wow, you know? yeah. He let him go, and then I guess the dog kind of liked where... <laughs> like like me <laughs> so i'm working on my back and uh he's uh he crawl like magnum long car lo almost as long as this thing and uh he crawled from the back all the way to the front because i'm working on the engine area yeah and uh started looking at my face and i'm like 
all right, cool. Like, uh, got yourself see, the thing a dog. Is, well, no, it, that wasn't the intention. <laughs> yeah. We, we, uh, the thing is, is that I lived on Commercial Boulevard, which is a huge, uh, I think it's three lanes on each side highway, and right. it's like can, it's can, no matter what time it is, it's busy. Oh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. And uh, literally right around my corner is Commercial Boulevard, and I'm almost on the corner, so it wasn't very far. Yeah, I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to let this dog keep running around. I'm gonna keep it in my backyard because I had dogs, so I wasn't going to. I don't know nothing about this dog, so I don't know if it's got, excuse me, if it's got its shots or anything like right. that. But uh, so we kept them in the backyard and uh, Kristen has always been a vet technician. She's good at her job. Yeah. She's very dedicated to her job. And uh, luckily there's no shortage of vets. So <laughs> right now she's got what she says is a really nice job here um, as same thing, vet technician. And she really likes it. You know, she's uh, transitioning very well, I think, you know, and uh, for the, for what we talk, how we talk, you know, and, and when we talk. I'm always working, so the talks are few and far between sometimes. Yeah. But uh, so this dog came up, and eventually we she took him took him to work, and we checked him for a microchip, and then we checked him and kind of like checked him for worms and all that typical sure, stuff. Sure. It was a young dog. Yeah, it was like a pit bull mix. Uh, we don't really know what kind of dog it was, <clears throat> but yeah, we. Um, we, after we checked him out, whatever, we brought him inside and he never left. And then uh, eventually, um, you know, un unfortunately, again, one of the best dogs I had, his heart was bigger than the chest cavity that he had. And it essentially he suffocated. And it was sad. And uh, <clears throat> I had, uh, I have, I, I believe in security cameras more than I believe in security systems. Yeah. Because usually what will happen with security cameras is um, you can get a text message saying, hey, I am triggered and you'll get a picture and the picture will say, oh, there's nothing there. Or the picture will say, oh, some dude's in my house. Right. A police officer, I feel, in my opinion, is going to be more inclined to rush over than if they are from some monitoring company saying, hey, right. uh, we got, right. a mon we got a, a, uh, an alarm triggered at so-and-so house. Sure. If I call 911 and be like, hey, I've got a person in my house right now. Uh, you know, they're going to be more inclined because it, it tells them, hey, something's actually going right, on. Right, right. So in my house in Florida, I had cameras inside as well. Now, they're not cameras. Like, I'm not creepy. So <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't cameras. It was cameras facing doors. Sure, you know, sure. But cameras these days are wide angle. Yeah. So it could see a lot of stuff. So the whole ordeal of him coming to his conclusion was all caught on camera. Oh. And I was able to see it, and I actually still have the video, and it's tough to watch. And uh, you know, my daughter, she lost her crap. She lost her shit. And my uh, my ex uh, my ex-wife, she a vet technician, did everything she could, and it just it wasn't gonna work out. Yeah. So, but yeah, he Man, was that's he tough. was yeah, it was tough. You know, uh, anybody who says that a pet is not part of the family probably shouldn't own a pet. They should absolutely not have a not pet. Not a pet. No way. Because, you know, they, no way. they become they become your love. You know, yeah. they become oh, part of the family. So. Absolutely. We we've lost we've lost some pets and I mean it's it's tough. You don't you, know, you don't realize until like that moment and, and the like, reflection. Yeah, you know? you're a grown man and you're like just bawling and you know yeah. it's yeah. uh it's emotional. I mean so that's for I'm, sure. I, because of I would say because of my upbringing, I don't I'm not going to say I don't cry, but, you know, like losses like that, I've never really cried. And but it's still it's like you, you're at a loss of words. Yeah. You know, I, I've never even for like family members, I don't, I've never cried. And it's not like I can't cry or anything. It's just I never did. Um, but it it was it was a, a hard situation. And I, I'm in Texas. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. And uh, my daughter's trying to call me and uh, I'm like. Renee, I can't, I couldn't do anything if I wanted to. Yeah. Like, I'm um, 1,200 miles away. I can't do anything. But, difficult situation, man, for sure. Yeah, way difficult. But yeah. it's just crazy how life is, it, it's all over the place. It is. You know, it, it really, really is. is. You know, and, and yeah. car, this car thing, you know, I, er, there's so much, there's so many people like me. Everybody's yeah. got such a hu, hu, uh, a different story. Oh, different for sure. Story to tell. For sure. That's, that's why, you know, 
it, it's like thinking about the podcast. It's one of the reasons why I started because it's not, it's not the vehicles, you know, it's not the customization. It's the people, it's the stories, right? Yeah. Their upbringing. Like, you know, one of the questions I usually ask is like, what, what got you into cars? Like what, you know, at 14 years old, you're working, you're grinding. You said you had a variety I, of different I jobs. I remember, I remember I was in high school skipping school now don't try this at home kids uh, <laughs> doing stereo systems in a high school parking lot like that's where i learned like yeah. literally stealing them no no <laughs> no uh, no installing he's like, like unwiring them <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah skipping school and then they come out it's like hey john's hey, truck again I, I, uh, <laughs> well i would say that's a great great reason to skip school is you're actually being productive, right? Yeah. You're working, you're making money. But it's you're, not, like, not you know. making money. There's yeah. definitely, it was like, hey, can you install my stereo? And it was like, so the thing about me is I'm a huge giver. Yeah. Like I would give somebody a shirt off my back if they needed it. You know, I don't like the beggars. Like, you know, it's a big thing here. It's a big thing in Florida. Oh. Texas is outlawed. Uh, sorry, not, not Texas. Uh, New York has outlawed it. You can't panhandle. So, but they need to I do that in Texas because it's it's on it's every. It's bad. Yeah, yeah it's, it's bad. It's bad. So I don't I don't give in to the beggars. Yep. But uh, you know I feel their pain. Some of them have no choice. Yeah. You know, and I, but there was this one time very specifically where I had a bre- I I was like a buy one get one free sandwich or something whatever it was it was buy one get one free I didn't technically pay for this food I did you know but. Um, I offered it one of those guys. I was like, hey, this is a brand new sandwich. I literally just got it. You saw me get it. And uh, he was like, I don't want your food. I want the money. And I was like, word? Okay, that killed me. That killed it. I shut down. Almost something exactly the same thing happened to me. And I just, I work way too hard for my money to give it out. Yes. You got two legs, two arms. You're on a street corner. You can hold you can get a job. I'm sorry. That's yeah, just how I feel. No, I'm not this sorry. Heat. Cause that's just how I feel. I yeah, see yeah. people hand out that money and I'm like, I just don't understand it, you know, but went and got coffees, right? It's a cold day. I come out with a coffee thinking like, all right, man, there's this he homeless looks like, guy, he looks like you know, he's struggling. Yeah. and I give him the coffees like exactly the same yeah, thing. He's I like, I already, I already got some coffee. I'm like, well, he's like, some, give it to somebody else. Here's some more. I mean, and, no. And I was like, and I was like, the one, literally the one time I go out of my way to do something nice for somebody who's obviously like pushing around a car, homeless, like that no. was a complete turnoff. I, I yeah, just, so I was, I was shocked. So I'm, I have the same relative opinion. Yeah. If you can stand out in this heat, especially right now. Yeah. If you can stand out in this heat you can get a job that, you know there's and especially now right now especially now if when you nobody can wants work to with work. Your, yeah if you can work with your hands <laughs> yeah. it will hire you yes if you can prove you're an american citizen i'm sure that I, i'm pretty sure that's part of it it's requirement now right i, I believe get, so you know, yeah. unless it's under a table yeah which plenty of that going on too yeah. um but you know if you can stand outside in this heat like today i mean we're uh i, I won't give a time but it's it's nighttime and we're 88 degrees yeah, still. Yeah. And they're still out here. Right. You know, they're basically out there until I guess the cop, like towards the dark, they get chased away because it becomes a hazard at that yeah. point. But if you could do that, and here's the trip. You know, the biggest trip is some of those dudes make more money at some points in my life than I do. And I'm like. And that's why they keep standing out there. And that's it. That's they it. Just, people enable that stuff. It, yeah, and it's, it's, like, it's, it's, just like, you know, it's just like if you're an addict and you have an enabler. You're never gonna change. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. it's the same concept. You know, absolutely. it could be it could be pushed on to so many different things. Yeah. You know, not just panhandling or using drugs and being addicted. It could be if you're enabling, that's an enabler. Unfortunately, the people who are giving that money, they probably don't even know that they're enabling it. Yeah. It's just like, oh well, yeah. Uh, let me feel good about myself today, and I'm gonna yeah. give this guy five bucks. <laughs> right. You know. Is it really for them or is it if for you? I, you know? That's the problem. That's what yeah. I think it is. You know, it's like, oh, I. My good deed was done today, you know? Um, but yeah, I offered that one person a brand new sandwich. Yeah. He saw me get it. He knows it's fresh. And he said, I don't want your food. I want your money. And I'm like, okay, roll the window down. I'm like, yo, I'm going to enjoy this. See ya. 
Dang. you know, and that it threw me off. And um, yeah, New York, it's been outlawed for a long time. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, see, New York, a lot of people got caught. So they got caught where they'd be driving, BM, driving BMWs and Mercedes, and yeah. then they put on some junk clothes and then go do it. And then they're they're making hundred k a year, and that's possible here too. Dang, that's you know crazy. think about it. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, every light is roughly four or five minutes long. Uh, well, no, let's say two minutes long. Right. In two minutes, they can make ten minutes, ten dollars every two minutes or more, depending on the location. Because just like in realty, location, location, that's it's, true. it's important. I never thought about it like per per, per location minute or per light or yeah. Never so thought they, about that, they can but make yeah, two minutes. That's wild. Two, Ten dollars every two minutes, give or take. Yeah. Because uh, an average light, unless it's a, a bad light, which there's plenty of them, um, when those when those lights are red and they're you know hanging out there, you know they're more than a couple minutes long. Sure. So, if you make, uh, I don't know, thirty dollars in an hour. That's a lot of money. There's people who do not make that. Right. Oh, no, no, absolutely. Hard for it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's so easy for them to do it. And that's, I think, uh, you know, Greg Abbott, our, um, you know, governor or, right, mm -hmm. governor? Yep, yep. Of Texas, he's doing a great job, I think. You know, he's, uh, Texas and even Florida has done very good in the uh, opening things back up. Right, and, right. And, you know, oh, people, I agree. People I need agree. to work. Yeah. You know, it's, it's unfortunate. It's part of life. Yep. You, uh. I need to work. I mean, I, I, I couldn't survive. I couldn't have. I need to work. <laughs> I couldn't have my truck if I didn't work. You know, I couldn't do it. So yeah. I think it's something that should be on his radar. Yeah, You know, if I, could, if I could say to him, hey, dude, like, work on that. Hey, yeah. Greg Abbott, governor of Texas, work on that. Yeah. Please do. Like, it would help so many people. Yeah. I, we see we see it probably daily all, all around Plano it's, it's area. Crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot off the, it's off every, the highways. It's absolutely yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere I've been, I've been in like Duncanville. Yep. Uh, isn't the jail in Duncanville? Um, or is that a, no, Seganville. Seagalville. 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 Yep. So yep. actually I got my Chewini from Seagalville during the yep. Texas <laughs> snowstorm. I'm in my, at the time, oh, two wheel really? drive Dodge Ram driving to Seagerville because I really wanted this dog. Oh, wow. That's, that's <laughs> but wild. But yeah, um, that was the only time I didn't see people out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that Sunday when it actually snowed. Yeah. So, remember it snowed like Saturday into Sunday. Right. On Sunday when the ground was coated. Oh, yeah. And that hasn't happened here in Texas as long as I've been. Yeah. There's been flurries. Sure. But the minute it hits, it, it, it's gone. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, that was it was crazy, and I lost power in Louisville at my house. I lost power for four days. It sucked. Me and my two dogs. It was just me and me and the two dogs. I have a fireplace that's not really a fireplace. Yeah. Like it, it, <laughs> it creates heat if you're standing on it. Yeah. But then it makes so much heat that it just dries you out. But yeah, that that four days was pretty tough. Yeah. Now I'm prepared. I was absolutely unprepared. I don't mm -hmm. follow the news, so I didn't even know it was coming. To be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. It just kind of happened, or the people that I work with were like, uh, "Yeah, it's gonna happen," and I'm like, "Shit." <laughs> but see, in Texas, it could, it, they could say it happens, and then it changes. It's like one minute it's storming, the next minute it's sunny. Like Texas is strange with well, the weather. That's like Florida. Yeah. Florida's like it's 90 degrees out and perfectly sunny, but it's also pouring down rain. <laughs> but it do, it only lasts for like 10 minutes, so yeah. it's like, oh, okay, so that's the afternoon storm. <laughs> Give it like 10 minutes after it stops and you won't even know it came. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty crazy. Weather in both of these states have been pretty crazy. Uh, I actually like Florida is, is not a, a multi-season state. There is a lot of, there's different seasons, obviously, but it's relatively close to the same season. You know, like Florida's cold is like uh, two weeks of 30 degrees. Yeah. Whereas my first year here in Texas, uh, it was like, 18 degrees and I'm like okay but I'm from New York so literally 2004 when I left New York was one of the coldest years that I ever remember in my entire life yeah and it was so cold and I was like you know you you drive from on I-95 you drive from New York to uh to Florida and you hit uh finally uh by south of the border yeah you hit south of the border and where all the firework stations are and everything firework places and finally that's like the second time we got out of the car and it was like 
the heat finally started and that got me hooked. Like, <laughs> I was like, screw this cold. And I love New York. I miss New York. I don't miss the taxes and all that other stuff. Yeah. But I miss the food of New York. And um, my, all of my family is there. Uh, Kristen, my ex-wife, she, uh, most, she has family there, but you know, her mother and father are now no longer with us. So most of her immediate family is gone. But uh, she still has like an uncle and stuff, uh, aunt and uncle there who they talk to and, and cousins and stuff. But all of my family's there. Like uh, I still got a grandfather who um, not doing so well right now, but I still have a grandfather there. My father's there. My uncle's there. Everybody's still there. And, um, you know, I'm here, you know, kind of doing a solo you, you thing. You go back and visit often? Honestly, I haven't been back there in so many years. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you the last time I was there. Yeah. I, I legit, I, maybe if I check my stories or something on Instagram or Facebook, yeah. it'll remind me. But uh, I think the last time I was there, I took my daughter to Newsies on Broadway. That was the last time I was there. Right. Actually, no. Yes, that was the last time I was there. Because uh, Kristen and Renee went there without me. And they went to see uh, Wicked, I believe. Which gotcha. I'm a yeah. big Broadway guy. Like, uh, are you? Yeah. I'm big Broadway. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I like to sing. I'm not like the greatest or nothing, <laughs> but uh, I like to sing. I'm a huge beatboxer. Like, are you really? I, yeah, I got it from my yeah? uncle. My uncle's pretty badass, and I got it from him. So randomly, like, I'll just start beatboxing. Yeah. Like, or if I'm listening to a song in my in my earphones or something, people like stop and look at me because they'll be like damn like where'd that come from <laughs> but it's it's multi uh like the tones i can change my my tones i can uh if i'm i can hum and beatbox at the same time it's it's that's yeah, pretty cool i like it yeah that's cool it um or if uh, i'm listening to a song and i think my beat could be better yeah like i'll create a beat in my head <laughs> yeah and that's uh, awesome it'll be totally that takes different. some serious talent though man that's, it does i mean i is. can't say i'm huge talented there's a million people better than me but at least, you know, it's something that I find, it in, it's something that, like when I'm having a stressful situation, I can throw some headphones in and I'm all about sound. Like, you know, my whole arm is tattooed yeah. with sound stuff. That's cool. And, uh, I, you know, I actually, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine uh, just recently and I was like, yeah, I've got like these thousand dollar headphones. And uh, she's like, what, what, what? I was like, listen, when I spend money on music stuff, I spend money on music stuff. Yeah. So I've got these $1,000 headphones and uh, Shure headphones and, you know, IMEIs, so in-ear monitor headphones, and uh, they're like four apertures, you know, balance drivers, you know. Well, I mean, see, and then for most people, that's like foreign language, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> But you understand all that yeah. and what it means to the average person, like, I'm buying some $40 ear pods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or even like, you know, like, like uh, Apple's done, I love Apple products, you know, and I like Apple products because of the synergy. Yeah. You know, like Apple Watch, Apple Phone, uh, AirPods. The synergy yeah. is what really takes me to Apple. But I don't like the Apple tax. Just like nobody does. Gotcha. Who likes Apple yeah. tax? And it's funny when I plug them stuff in and uh, or somebody's like, hey, can I get your charger? I'm like, hey, you want some Apple juice? Yeah. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but it's crazy. Like with this, uh, you know, we only get one life and I try to live it as best as I can. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a dependable person. You know, I, I, I try to do everything I say I'm gonna do. Absolutely, that's and, the only way to live. And the thing about me is like, uh, I undervalue myself um, so I can overvalue the end result. Yeah. So like uh, most of the jobs that I've had in my life, I'm like, yeah, I could do that, I could do this, and I could do that. And like my current job, when I met the guys, I was like, yeah, I could do this, I could do that. But you know, talk is cheap. You know, and um, I undervalued, but I over delivered. And yeah. now it's like fast. I'm becoming one of the Mopar go to guys in Texas. There's That's other awesome. shops yeah. that are doing There's other shops that are doing it. Yeah. And those shops have been in business for a lot longer time. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I under I think I understand it better. That's all. That's I mean, cool. I'm not going to talk crap about any shop. I've I've fixed. Plenty of stuff from some of the other shops oh, in the sure, area. Oh, for sure, for sure. But, um, you know, we all, there's enough space in this market to make money for all of yes, us. Yes, there is. Yes, there but, is. But, you know, at the same time, like, you know, 
I reinvest myself all the time. Reinvest in myself all the time. Yeah. So I don't believe in snap-on tools. Like that's a lot of money. I can buy ten ratchets for the cost of one. And I mean, if Snap-on wants to donate, yeah, uh, I'll right? take it. You know, or Matco or yeah. whatever. I don't. I don't buy off the trucks. Yeah. Because uh, like I love the tools. They're they're warranted and all this other stuff. I just can't see me using a tool that costs a hundred dollars that I can still satisfy that job with a ten dollar tool. Right. Now granted, there is tools that these trucks snap on I do have snap on tools. There is no substitute for some of the stuff that they have. Sure. Absolutely sure. not. But for your basic stuff, come on now. That's yeah. some of the prices are just you don't out. need a two hundred dollar screwdriver set. Yeah, like or screwdriver, <laughs> not even a set. This is Snap On we're talking about. Uh, but their stuff is top notch. It yeah. really is. Yeah. You know, and uh, I know Snap On's heavily in the red. I'm not a fan of red, so I'm glad they came out with like greens and blue. Well, I don't think they came out with blues, but like uh, neon greens, neon oranges, stuff like that. I do have a couple of their stuff because it is quality stuff. Yeah. But. So I reinvest in myself a lot. You know, if I need a tool, um, I get it for myself. Like, um, figure it out. Yeah, you know, like I sure. want, it doesn't matter what it costs. If I think I'm gonna reuse it multiple times, I'm gonna buy it. Like, and here's my rule of thumb. And it should be a rule of thumb for anybody who buys their own tools. If someone borrows a tool from you, if they borrow it once, that's one thing. But if you borrow it twice, you need to buy your own. And that's what I live by. So if I've ever borrowed tools from somebody, and I've had to borrow it more than once, I'm gonna get that's my own. That's a good rule. That, that's a fantastic rule, Because yeah. if I have to borrow it more than once, yeah. that means then I need, need it. you need it, you need exactly it, right. yeah, absolutely. I, that means I need it. And like, you know, I have, uh, I have tools now, because I was working at the dealership, I have tools now that collect dust, and it sucks. But if I need it, like the other you day, have it, yeah. I have it. Yeah. You know, the other day I need to help a coworker uh, do an EVAP test on a Jeep, an older Jeep, and uh, of course, Jeeps are, mostly through a million people's hands at the time, yeah. <laughs> especially something that was made in 04. But um, yeah, I had a smoker machine, a snap-on smoker machine, just so happens, <laughs> we're talking about it. Yeah. But yeah, I had one, and the shop has one, but mine works better, yeah. you know? And it's <laughs> old, it thing is old. Like, I, I got it probably off of Craigslist or something. Yeah. Cra and because that's all we had back in the day. There was no offer up or oh, yeah. eBay was yeah. kind of new. Yeah. I love Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. In fact, one of the only reasons why I keep Facebook is for the marketplace. Yeah, I hear that a lot. I <laughs> yeah, hear that a lot. One of the only reasons yeah. why I keep it now yeah. because I don't, I think, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be political or nothing, but I think some of the stuff that these big tech companies are doing is, is bad. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to get too much into it, but I think some of it is pretty bad. You know, it should be, should be regulated. It should be. It should be. I agree. I agree. You know, I think that, well, I think that everybody has the ability to voice their opinion and the fact that it's being suppressed is bad, you know, and yeah. that's across all the big tech companies. And that's, that's, I don't think any one of them when they started off saying, well, we're going to get here so that we can do this, but now they're all doing it. And it's like, man, that sucks. You know, it's a big, uh, for me, it's like, I like Instagram. I like Facebook. I don't use Twitter. I used to, um, but I'd like to use them. You know, I'm on my phone all the time. Right. You know, I get my news from Facebook. Yeah. Who does, you know, <laughs> nowadays, like I don't, I don't watch the news because, you know, it, I, I'm, I, I work too much. Yeah. You know, quite honestly. Yeah. But, um, well, I yeah, appreciate just, you coming out and making time for us, man, because I know you're busy. Yeah. So. I mean, I've never done this before, so I've, I've been saying this. Like I've been saying, the thing about me is I got a lot to say. You know, back in the day, or when I was younger. I wouldn't talk to people. Like I was head down focused. Yeah. And I still am. I'm head down focused, but now I'm transitioning to the point where I'm more open because sure. it has got me in the la and this is I you know, I'm 38 years old. This is a, my hair style is is new. It's fairly new. It's 2 years old. Yeah. Um other than that, I've always shaved my head cuz growing up, you were just given a buzzer. There was no barbershops. Right, right. Uh no one was going to pay for that. So it was, here's a buzzer. You want to cut your hair? Uh, you got 15 minutes. Go get it. Go, go do it. And uh, clean up that buzzer when you're done and hand it back. You yeah. know, the next person's ready to go. Um, crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But um, yeah, now I'm like, 
man, I got a lot to say. And considering my upbringing, like one time, I don't remember who it was, they were like, man, you should be a motivational speaker. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't know. But now it's like, I know for a fact I can be in front of big crowds. Yeah. yeah. Isn't like, it amazing how that changes? It, it is. Yeah. Like, it's like, wait a second, you go from someone super quiet to someone who can talk in front of all these big crowds? Like, I could. And it wasn't TV that did it. It was just me. Well, man, we, we actually talked about a lot of stuff, man. Covered, Already. Co- covered I mean, a yeah. lot. And we haven't even gotten we to We haven't even gotten to the car. To but, you know, yet. that's the thing. You know, tailpipe talk is great because it starts from somewhere. Yeah. Oh, Every yeah. single person has a story. And uh, sometimes it's the people you meet along the way that really emphasize your story. Yeah. You know, like uh, I say Josh Freeman. Sure. He's a cool ass dude, man. And he's yeah. doing really good stuff right now. Um, and, uh, you know, on the TV show, especially Shifting Gears. So one of the bad things about Shifting Gears was that it was new to all of us except Aaron. So us four cast members plus Aaron. Well, Jeremy was a cast monkey, uh, cast monkey, cast monkey garage person right, as well. Right. Before he, I don't know if he got let go or what. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to throw him on blast. But um, he... Uh, he, I used to talk to him a little bit, but Josh Freeman and I, we talked a lot. Yeah. You know, and honestly, he's the only person I still talk to. Gotcha. And even gotcha. that's far and few between. Yeah. You know, we've, you know, we have our differences, but uh, with the first show, it was like everybody's trying to get into their own, and I'm very passive, so I'm very like, eh, like I don't want to step on your toes, kind of deal. Right. So on the first TV show, like I would always do stuff around the shop like at shifting gears at aaron kaufman shop i did water lines i maintained all the machines because these guys are doing metal fabrication and right. it's not my forte sure uh and at the same time some of these guys are learning metal fabrication to the extent of what the job was right right you know like josh is great great welder um jeremy is a good metal fabric guy too um good welder as well yeah and um you know these guys were that's what they were there for so i'm not going to sit there and try to jump into their mix sure sure you know but it it uh on tv it's like you know you got to kind of be an outcast or you know on reality tv out sure i agree i agree if you're not it's not scripted neither show is scripted yeah. so you got to be that guy who draws the camera in right. because in my job with the electrical stuff no one watched no one wants to see that stuff <laughs> in fact it barely made it on tv even though it was 100 percent required yeah um like uh transitioning from shifting gears to the i had roughly 30 days off between them and uh josh freeman was actually the one who got me into gas monkey yeah because they had they had let go of their wiring guy for whatever reason um and uh, they needed a guy, and um, there was a situation. It was wasn't even TV related, and they needed to fix something that their the shop had redone at one point. Mm-hmm. And Josh was like, "Hey, I got this guy," and they brought me in. And literally, if Gas Monkey didn't pick me up, I was packing my stuff up and heading back to Florida because no I kidding. owned a house there. Yeah, no kidding. So That's wild. my rent here was damn near uh, because I had a roommate. Uh, it was split, but if it wasn't the roommate, then I would have hightailed back. Yeah. Because the, uh, you know, I was, I had my house there. So, and my house was like, at the time, you know, obviously every year the, the cost goes up. Oh, yeah. But at the time it was like 1300 a month. It was like a, a five bedroom, three bathroom, or a two and a half bathroom house with a massive pool. Um, so, it, and it was the best house I've ever been in. I love that. I miss that house. Like, I had a lift in my garage. I was telling you earlier. Oh, it's badass. Yeah. Three-car garage. Yeah. Um, my Ram, as long as it is. Yeah. Not this one, because it never made it to Florida. I yeah. bought it here in Texas. But my previous Ram, which I'd love to talk about as well, because that was a build as well. Yeah. Um, that would fit in the garage. And now I can't find a house at all. I, I rent a house right now, and I just wish my truck, with the, with the hailstorms you get, which oh, kind of yeah. sucks. That does. I wish we could, I could park my car in the garage. But when it, if it gets bad, at least the majority of it will be. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, well, 
We keep touching base on the truck, but we haven't started talking about the no, truck. No, we haven't. So, so this is this is a 2021. Yes, yeah, 2021 T Rex yeah. or T R X. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot the of people. The nickname is T Rex, though, yeah, isn't it? And it's because of the, uh, you know, that's the premise. You know, yeah. they went after the Ford Raptor. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they got some Easter eggs inside the car. You yeah. know, uh, <laughs> inside the center console, there's an engraving where a T Rex is. Uh, chasing uh, a, um, a raptor, raptor yeah. and then underneath the hood when you pop one of the covers off you have the t-rex eating the raptor yeah, which is cool <laughs> which i mean which in real, really reality cool. uh you know power plants there's yeah. no there's no replacement for displacement yeah you know so the uh, v6 twin turbo car that's uh i think it's 35 eco boost motor that's in the raptor yeah great uh i wouldn't say it's a great motor but because i've owned one and I can tell stories about yeah. it, but uh, I, I didn't own it in a Raptor. I owned it in a Ford Explorer, but same, I, I believe, I don't know a lot about Ford. So yeah. I believe basically the, the premise, same platform. Yeah. premise between the car and the Explorer. Yeah. But I mean, I only had that car for three years and that thing started burning oil like nobody's business. Yeah. It had like maybe at the time we turned it back in like 19,000 miles. So 19,000 wow. miles it essentially started eating itself. Um, so yeah, and I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, yeah. I don't know much about it. I didn't do any modifications to it at all. It, it had a tune at one point, but it was like, it didn't like it. So we just put it back stock and, um, yeah. So, so yeah, the T-Rex, it's, it's actually a pretty badass truck. And, you know, I, I was talking about the transition of why I have this truck and I'll touch base on it real quick. Yeah. So I got my first Dodge Ram back in 2019. I've always been a majority Mopar guy, um, besides the two Cadillacs I had. Um, I got my first 19 Ram as a new body style. So the DT is the engine code or the body chassis code. Whereas you have the uh, DS, which is the old one, uh, which they still make a 19 and maybe even a 20 classic which is the old body style, sm gotcha. smaller back door, way less room. Yeah. So one of the things that really, I'm a technology guy, and I've said this to everybody I meet, you know, I love technology. Uh, it had that, 19, that, that big 12 inch screen in it. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It, it is now, amazing. It's slow because it's a Uconnect 4 system and it's years old, you know, technology increases, yeah. you know, so it's years old, but uh, I had a 19 Ram, uh, 1500 and uh, in le about 2000 miles, I pulled the 5.7 out and I put a 6.4 in it. Now, why Mopar doesn't do a 6.4 in the 1500s, I don't know. Yeah. Because uh, the 6.4 is roughly 100 horsepower, 100 foot pounds torque more in the same package. Right, right. So my Ram 1500, and I, I, I think I'm one of the first to do it. Somebody might have been the first, or we were doing it at the same time. Yeah. Because I bought my truck. They just started hitting the lots in, like, um, say, September, October. I bought mine in December of 2018. Yeah. And that, somebody had posted on the forums. I was like, I was the first one. And they were like, no, 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 my friend did it first. <laughs> and maybe we were doing it at the same yeah. time. I don't know. Yeah. But I did the 6.4, and then a couple years later, I did a Whipple on top of it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was a fun truck yeah i bet so it's two-wheel drive so during that snowstorm yeah. it was all over the place <laughs> but um i was throwing a little bit more boost at it than i should have i was throwing about nine and change pounds of boost at yeah. it the problem with the 6.4 motor is uh design cheapness of it they use really crappy pistons yeah and uh what happens is you have the intake and exhaust ring lands pop off and then it just allow, starts allowing blow by and it just increasingly gets worse and worse and worse. A lot of, there's probably people with six fours in cars that have broken ring lands that don't even know. Oh, really? Yeah, it's yeah. In stock applications. Yeah. Yeah. So that, what, that's what led me to uh, TRX. Gotcha. So honestly, I don't even like blowers. Yeah. You know, when I had the Cadillac ATSV, that twin turbo car, man. I, I was sold on turbos. Yeah. But I also like Mopar so much. Unfortunately, Mopar hasn't gotten in turbo market. You know, and, and I could see it. It's, it's, uh, I'm sure they can repackage things. They sure. should have done, I mean, they could have done like a, 
like uh, like Cadillac did with like a three six yeah. uh, twin turbo uh, Charger Challenger. Sure. I think it would have. I think it would have been pretty awesome, you know. But with the Whipple, that that truck was about six hundred horsepower to the wheels. It was fun. But you know what the kicker is? Thirty three gallon tank. It still got on the highway twenty five miles per gallon. Wow, really? So with the thirty three gallon <clears throat> tank, and that truck's made a lot of transitions from Texas to Florida yeah. and back. Yeah. Many, many times, more than ten. And um, the uh, the only I had to fill up two and a half times. So and that started with the six four, because the six four has more torque. So you know the adage is, torque gets you going, horsepower keeps you going. Sure. So because of the extended amount, the increased amount of torque, the truck was just so, it, that truck was like a big car. Yeah. It felt like a bigger car. I mean, I loved it. And the, the new body style, there's so much room in it. Um, everything's comfortable. I don't really have a lot of passengers, but when I do, I hate pulling my seat up. Yes. You know I, what I'm saying? I hate yeah. having to <laughs> inconvenience myself Absolutely. just so I can have passengers. Absolutely. And uh, in the Ram, in the new body style Ram, you don't have to do it. Yeah. There's room for days. Yeah. Like even if you were a tall guy, I'm not, you know, I'm 5'10", but I sit pretty low. Yeah. And I do not have to adjust my seat no matter who is in my car. And I go out th with the guys from Starwood, I go out to lunch with them all the time. Yeah. And sometimes it's a full row, you know, full seat. And the seats recline in the back. So they're all like, Oh, they oh. do? Yeah, they recline. Wow, yeah, that's it's, impressive it's, actually. It's a, you know, it's a... Besides this one, you know, I, it, that sold me on the Ram. Yeah. And because I work on the Hellcat platform so much, um, besi uh, sorry, the, the Whipple and the 6.4 got me to want another Ram. And uh, then the TRX was there. And there's certain things about this TRX that just, it drew me to it yeah. immensely, super fast. You know, the center console shifter instead of the rotary knob. Right, right. Same, uh, relatively the same transmission. You know, this is an HP 95. I had an HP uh, 75. Um, both HP transmissions, mm -hmm. just one is built better. And this is an all-wheel drive version. And this truck is all-wheel drive all the time. There is no really, there's no shutting off. There's ways to shut off the front-wheel drive. Yeah. Some people have actually learned the hard way that you can't do that on a dyno. Yeah. But there's ways to <laughs> shut off the front wheel drive. And I, I got videos posted on Instagram with uh, full send it burnouts. You know, oh, no back kidding. With the, yeah, yeah, with the factory tires. Yeah. You know? um, and that's not with removing drive shafts or anything like that. So, yeah, this truck is really fun. But that's having cool. that first truck yeah. was what made me want to get another Ram. And the, the fact that I work on the platform so much yeah. is what put me into it. Now... Here oh, comes here it comes. Bad news. Here yeah. comes. <laughs> so, I don't know what the cause of it is yet. We're investigating it. Um, but this time last week, the car was in pieces. So, this TRX really? was in pieces. Because I did a, a bunch of basic bolt ons. Yeah. And uh, most Hellcats will get a pulley, some injectors, and some spark plugs. And that's like our stage one sure. package. The cars do not suffer from this problem yeah but track hawks it's the all-wheel drive stuff Interesting. track hawks uh probably the durango the new hellcat durango yeah. and now like i said i just recently learned that the trx so there's an issue where one cylinder specifically goes so lean that the aluminum pistons melt and that's essentially what happened to me so my 2000 mile truck and now i wasn't going crazy yeah now like um it uh it basically melted the piston, and I won't say what speed I was going. I was going faster than 100, yeah. but nothing that should have caused the piston to, to fail sure. the way it For did. For sure. Um, and it did. And, you know, some of the speculations is the factory fuel rails. There's, a, there's this, uh, I guess it's a relief valve or something above cylinder three yeah. that might have aided to it because cylinder three is ultimately the cylinder that, that went, went to shit. And uh, I melted the piston, and I've got pictures to prove it. That's wild, so man. So this time last week, it actually, so today's Tuesday. Uh, I don't know if I could say that or not, but Yeah, you whatever. can say absolutely. See, uh, in TV, it's like you don't t say the time, you don't say the date. Yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. You know? Makes sense. But um, <clears throat> this time last week, I was 
well, no, not this time. It didn't happen till around midnight on Tuesday. Yeah. But uh, 121, which is uh, Sam Rayborn here in Texas, Dallas yeah. area, was completely open. Yeah. And I wanted to test the legs on my truck, Heck you know? Yeah. And it's uh, had some bolt-ons, uh, basic bolt I, I I can't stress this enough, a lot of basic bolt-ons. Yeah. But it had some bolt-ons on it, and uh, number three didn't last. And so uh, first I had to do the whole diag of what took place, right. compression checks, things like that. Uh, the, the spark plugs were non-existent. Yeah. So the straps were completely burnt off. Uh, we're investigating it. So the only thing I don't do is tune. It's the only thing in the entire process that I don't do. So I, I have a tuner. Uh, I trust them. Yeah. You know. Um, but you know, I it's a. We believe it's a combination of fuel rail problems. Interesting. Because you know, it was obviously a fuel starving issue. Right. And the thing is that it happened so fast. Like I heard it. I didn't. I heard it pulling timing. Yeah. Like you hear it start knocking, and if you're trained, you let go. Unfortunately, it was too late. Yeah. Too late for me. So right now the truck is stock. And the reason the truck is stock is because I'm actually getting another one. And so I, in the last couple of days, and I just finished Saturday, I had the, uh, in these vehicles, you have to pull the bat, you have to pull the whole cab off, just like Fords and diesels really? and stuff like that. Really? In order to properly work on that motor, yeah. you can pull the whole front end off, right. but that's just dumb. Yeah. So you pull the cab off, and gotcha. I got pictures. For, and I mean, it's first time ever. <laughs> first time I've done a, a cab off yeah. on a Ram at the dealership, but not on a TRX. It yeah. didn't exist when I was working at the dealership, and um, it was actually not that hard. I mean, I've been around these things, and uh, I'm gonna tell you something that's really weird. And the uh, I have a skill, and that's the best thing I could say. It is. So I work on these cars, and I take all the bolts and I don't segregate the bolts. They all get thrown in one box. And then people, minds blown, they're like, how do you remember what, exactly what bolt goes in exactly what location? I couldn't tell you, it's, it's like a photographic memory for just that. Like yeah. I, ain't got, I don't have one for anything else, yeah. but photographic memory for just that. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, I'm talking that about- That is a gift, man, the that is the, a gift. The TRX, <laughs> the TRX, there is so much you have to take apart to do the minimum of things. Yeah. So I'm glad I got one because, you know, it's becoming something that people want to mod. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad, unfortunately, like I'm not glad it happened to me, but I have a potential solution to prevent it from happening to a customer. So, you know, and uh, you know, on a customer base, like if it happened to a customer, like, yeah, we have, we're obviously, we're a shop. We're, we're right. a fully-fledged, insured shop. Yeah. So if something happens and it turns out that it, it's our fault, we fix it. Sure. Any respectable shop will do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, they should. But in my situation, I did everything. It's my truck. I did it. I was driving it, and I know that, I know that, um, you know, it, um, I didn't do anything crazy. Yeah. So... Now did now did Ram get involved in warranty? No, so or what, you, like, the reason how did that work? no, I did it myself, and I actually uh, I uh, was able to obtain a piston, and uh, the rod was fine, uh, the cylinder wall was fine. Uh, it had some transfer from the gasket, which also melted. Yeah. Which the gasket doesn't cover the hole, but it it, it kind of melted inward. Gotcha. So I had to uh, I had to do a quick hone on the cylinder, and uh, replace the replace the piston. So. Uh, it sucked. Yeah, I'm two thousand sure. mile truck. Sure, it yeah. sucked. Uh, I didn't want it to happen, um, but it did, and I learned a lot from it. You know, and that's what we have to do in this industry. We have to learn from our mistakes. It's amazing, and here you are today. Um, like here I that. am, and I it's mean, driving. That's, that's so crazy. I'm like still, that was a week ago. <laughs> um, it's, no, it's Saturday. Less I than finished. A week ago. So here's the oh, kick. Oh, you finished Saturday. I finished Saturday. So, so like it happened. Days, it happened days? on yeah. Tuesday night, and then Wednesday I diagged it and started taking it apart. I would have had the cab off the car. It, so I started at seven o'clock on Wednesday. I would have had the cab off the car and because I gave myself an endpoint of 10 p.m. Because I don't want to work all night right, and then leave, right. yep. barely eat, and then come home and sure. do it again. So I would have had the cab off on Wednesday if I had the, the access to the 1234 AC machine. That's gotcha. something we lock up in the yeah. shop. and. Um, it was locked up. If I could have drained the AC, you know, I don't believe in 
letting Freon out in the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So plus that stuff is expensive. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I would have had the cab off on Wednesday night when I first started diving yeah. into it. And that's, that's with wild. Diag. That's with Diag. That's with compression checks. That's with scoping the cylinders. Yeah. I've got pictures of the cylinder. I've got, you know, my, uh, my scope is pretty awesome. It's yeah. a 1080p wide angle scope, uh, uh, bore scope, and it's pretty awesome. But yeah, just a week ago, this thing That's was- That's wild, man. I'm babying it now. Yeah. Because like I said, I have another one. And there's no reason, the reason I have another one on order is because they are releasing a Gen uh, Uconnect 5 radio. So because I'm a technology guy, yeah. and because the market is so good right now, Sure. I know that I can trade this in and I can get my other one and shoot, the dealership might even give me more than I paid for yeah. with the how things are going that right is, now. That is how the used car market is going. I right mean, it's, now. It's pretty incredible. So, and these things are going for massive amounts. Like yeah. uh, the thing about the T-Rex is that what a lot of dealerships are doing is they ordered them, they got them, but they had, once they realized the market was what it was, yeah. Excuse me. They started selling them at an auction so they can make a quick fifteen, twenty thousand dollars without even have to deal with all the paperwork. They drive them for like two hundred, three hundred miles, yeah. so they're used at this point. Yeah. Sell them at auction to, I guess, satisfy whatever requirements they have. Interesting. And then they're flipping them at auction, and now the people who are buying them at auction have to make a profit too. Sure. So now you're, it's just a compounding, and that's yeah. why you're seeing them for a hundred. 100k you, you uh, brand new ones are still going for depending on the dealership uh 5k over 15k over yeah i was lucky enough that i got this one from msrp and um even i didn't want to spend that much yeah you know if there was just any other time that wouldn't have flew but because of the times that it is right now got it for msrp uh but it's cool i mean i love this truck i mean i got fire tv wired into the radio so you know Man, not supposed to, but <laughs> I will say it's uh, it's going to be cool for people to to see it on the YouTube because this is my first time seeing it in person. And there's so many amazing details. And when you pulled up that 12 inch screen and all the the features on the monitor and the performance and yeah. like just all of it right there. I mean, that's 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 pretty cool. So what, that's I, was, cool. what I was going to do is I was going to buy another Ram, a, new, a 22 Ram and build it. I could have saved thousands of dollars yeah. doing it and I'd have a sleeper yeah. and I love sleepers. But yeah, this bulldog stance, yeah, you can't. Yeah. You, yeah. No, it's got a, it's this, got a presence about it. That's for thing, sure. <laughs> I, I will tell you this at the, whatever speed I was at yeah. and the, 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 the system impaled itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it felt like nothing. It felt like, um, it handled it like it was nothing. My other truck, uh, it too basically had no speed limiter. Yeah. Uh, now I'm not a, a guy that likes to drive super fast like that. I'm not gonna put anybody else's lives in, in danger or stuff like that. But when it's open highway and uh, it's just me in the truck, my other truck was a little sketchy yeah. because it was air ride and uh, I have a 100% ability to ma manipulate certain computers in these cars. Gotcha. So my air ride was modified through computer. So my truck was lowered with a stock air ride oh, modified. Wow. And the yeah. only thing I did hardware wise was I modified the bump stop and removed about the rear bump stop. I removed about one inch. So I basically cut this cup off yeah. or uh, the, the bump stop cup had like an inch or so, I would say maybe even closer to an inch and a half spacer. Cut that up and that was in my gas monkey gaze. Yeah. I cut that off welded the cup in there to keep the bump stop and now my truck's like three and a half inches lower than high wow. stock now That's but wild. in a in a using a stock parts the uh you know it's not filling the air up <laughs> as yeah. much you yeah. know you're kind of tricking it out so <clears throat> is there more you want to talk about the t-rex um not so much i mean the t-rex everybody knows what it is yeah um I get looks at it, looks and thumbs up, and funny enough, I, I go to supermarkets, and this is my daily driver. Yeah. And I, I wish sometimes with the gas mileage, now I didn't buy this thing for gas mileage, and that sticker on my gas cap definitely suits it. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it definitely, I don't understand why it's so bad on gas, but at the same time, it's not why I bought it. Yeah. 
you know, and uh, in Texas, we're com- somewhat sheltered from the fuel prices because sure. Texas produces everything. That's one of the reasons why I like it here. It produces yeah. damn near everything that we need uh, or we can survive. Sure. Um, if we had like a San Andreas fault, like, like California does, and all of a sudden it erupted and, uh, or, or went active yeah. and separated us, I think it would be all right. <laughs> you know? Very but, true, um, very true. You know, but some of the things like, uh, you know, just stuff that I've done, like even Gas Monkey, you know, Gas Monkey was, uh, was really cool when it was good and really bad when it was bad. Yeah. You know, and people don't realize that TV is demanding. Um, and we actually built cars in four or eight weeks, depending yeah. if it was a single episode build or a dual episode build, we built those cars. But not only did we build those cars, we were building two or even three cars at once. Uh, whereas at shifting gears is one you dedicated on one car, you know, uh, most of the time it was dedicated on one car, but gas monkey garage. No, it was. And then you had to deal with Richard. Richard Damn. was nuts. Like yeah. he he had the ability to when a camera came on he can he had the ability to turn it on, but every other time man it, it was it was a little tough working with him. I'm a sure tough working for him. I'm sure you know especially when he makes comments like he uh, he rolled in with this four hundred thirty thousand um, dollar Bentley something Wraith or something like yeah. that. I don't you know I don't know what it was uh, two door Wraith I guess it was called. Uh, somebody will correct me. You know? I'm sure, <laughs> right? But um, yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, that's uh, that's your Christmas bonus." And I'm like, cool, dude. So I brought my, you know, I don't want to say this. I, I won't say this because um, it's pretty, pretty disturbing. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna pass that. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to say something, but you know, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. You know, when it when it was good, like uh, Gas Monkey Garage had a huge impact on my life. It um, it was great working with all the cast members. Uh, you know, there was trial times there, um, just like anywhere any other TV show. But the uh, the film crew was amazing. You know, Pil- Pilgrim Media Group. You know, uh, a couple of those guys. My sound guy Johnny, producer James. Yeah. Uh, some of these guys are fucking re- excuse me, really good at what they do. Yeah. And uh, you know, I miss that aspect. I miss working with those guys. I miss having access to the tools we did in Gas Monkey. Sure. Like, you know, we had we had um, sponsorships from a lot of different companies. And uh, I really learned to weld very uh, better at Gas Monkey because some of the machines that they had yeah. were just... State of the art. It was not, no, not even state of the oh, art. Oh, really? It's yeah. just good. Yeah. Like quality, quality stuff, you know, stuff from Lincoln, um, you know, some of the stuff, it was massive. Like the TIG welders were massive. Like, yeah, those things probably weighed 500 pounds. Yeah. But, man, if you, uh, if you really concentrate on it, you can do it. And see, like with welding, one of the reasons why it was always hard for me is because when I was a kid, I screwed up one of my eyes. So, you know, with welding, you got to follow that puddle. Right. Uh, you got you to gotta flow that puddle in the direction you want to. And, like, for me, my right eye is, is severely impacted. So like when I'm welding, MIG welding, you know, shooting a gun, that's easy. But TIG welding is where it really is. Yeah. It's like you got, I gotta like bend down and and follow that puddle. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's not so easy, especially in what what made it really easy at Gas Monkey was the lighting. You know, that place was uh, air conditioned. Yeah. Texas heat. Oh yeah. Didn't matter. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was air conditioned and everything. And, uh, you know, I miss that aspect. I hope there's more TV opportunities in the future. Yeah. Like I said, I, I hope, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up watching Monster Garage. I would love to. Yeah, I did too. On, I, I did too. Would, yeah, and love American Chopper and stuff. I love that show. And, yeah, I love Both shows. of them, you know. I would and love wasn't to. about the drama so much, but no, I mean, the yeah, creativity. Yeah, for sure. The creativity. Yeah, Paul Jr. was, yeah. was oh, pretty badass. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. his mind works Absolutely. in different ways. And, um, you know, like, uh, we're in Texas, and uh, Jesse James is here in Texas, yeah. and uh, I'd love to to get a you know one of the builds on, you know. That'd be awesome, man. You'll get it. You'll I, get I hope it. so. You'll yeah, I it. hope so. I mean, I have a lot to offer, something like that. And uh, the best thing about me is, I have no box. So when you people say, "Oh, think out of the box," yeah, I don't have a box. Yeah. 
Like the way my brain works is I'm looking at situations from all different angles before I even approach it. Yeah. And that's the same way I am with troubleshooting. And that's why I'm pretty damn good at what I do. Yeah. You know, you're, and, gift. Uh, you're a gift, man. Yeah, it's That's it's, awesome. it's fun what I'm doing and meeting people like like Rob. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. Uh, Rob from Tinstar. You know, I've sent him a couple customers. Sure. You've sent him a couple customers. Uh, he showed up at Gas Monkey Garage and presented himself. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, he he was cool as shit, and uh, you know, and he tinted the TRX and he tinted my ex-wife's car. Yeah. And uh, he's tinted a bunch of other people's cars. Yeah, Rob's good him. people, man. He's real good people, yeah. and uh, you know. He uh, his shop is pretty badass, you know, air conditioned shop. And I did another, I did a, I did a little IG video with him as well, you yeah. know. And uh, at the end, I'm pretty sure he was like, "Damn, bro, you just turned it on." And I didn't even expect <laughs> that from you. And uh, you know, when you're in TV, the the thing about TV and what happened with me was, um, the again the wiring thing, no one likes that. So I yeah. had to get in where I fit in. Right, right. And uh, sometimes I had to do stuff that uh, I wasn't good at, but I had to do it because like. I want, I'm here. I want TV time too. I want the camera to Absolutely. show me. And, uh, you know, some of the cool things I did it, like the international scout we built with a Hellcat motor in it. That yeah. was one of my favorite builds. Yeah. That was cool. That, that thing, was cool. And you know, that was an awesome the build. fun part, the funny part about it is that they didn't show any of the, any of the problems. So off camera, yeah. I spent 40 personal hours getting that eight speed transmission working. And some of the things I had to do to get it to work. Yeah was yeah like i never i've never done that before either yeah and now i'm doing it on a, a build on tv right and we don't have a timeline we yeah. can't oh let's just push this thing aside and figure it out later sure. no, no, no no uh editors have already got stuff cut and printed for this we yeah. need to finish it it needs to be rolling and man at the when i finally figured out and i worked with a company for a kind of a emulator system right. to get that to work because a lot of people thought including myself that you the eight because the eight speed had the transmission computer built into it it would just work right no yeah. learn the hard way that that's what that wasn't the case so that truck that little truck man and uh there's pictures all over the internet man the guys who did the metal fabrication it, it was i love that truck yeah that's you pretty know? cool it is and, pretty and cool. people that don't realize that we build. built all that stuff in house. Yeah, like Chris Austin Chassis Works, I believe, were the person who right. sent us the chassis. Yeah, it. you know Josh and Jeremy uh, from the show. They uh, they welded it all up. Yeah, and uh, you know, and that thing was pretty badass. Like uh, it had a stereo system in it. Everything functioned. The hood was still reverse open, right, opening right. and stuff. And that Hellcat motor just screamed. And it had AC and everything. Texas Heat, you have to. Yeah. So, it was not. a killer build. You know, we touched base on Gas Monkey Garage. So I remember watching the like the probably the very first episode. He was in a little two bay. Yeah. You know thing, and then the growth over the first year and second year, and he def definitely has a TV personality. And it seems like it's like love or hate him, right? You, it's, well, it's it's one or the other. It's it's absolutely love and hate, but I think the ultimate demise of Gas Monkey Garage was his ego. Oh, yeah. Because um, what a lot of people don't realize is that we were granted, I believe, 20 episodes from Discovery. Yeah. But essentially, without getting into too much detail, he pissed off the wrong person. Gotcha. And Discovery ripped it back from us. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, layoffs ensued shortly yeah. after. Less than 30 days, me, uh, Mike Coy, and Josh Freeman were let go from the show. And then I would say it wasn't until the recent podcast uh, with Joe Rogan that Richard finally admitted that uh, the show is no longer a thing. Yeah. And I think uh, for the fans' sake, that was a pretty crappy thing to do on his part. Yeah. You know, but nonetheless, I hope TV happens again. Uh, I think uh, now that I'm off TV, I've learned a lot and I've learned how to present myself in front of a camera a lot easier. I mean, we've been talking for X amount of hours. And, <laughs> and then even before the camera started. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, um, it's so easy. Like yesterday, it's pretty funny. Uh, I'm working on a, a car for a YouTuber, Real Nova 797, yeah. and like I discussed earlier. And I did a video with her yesterday. Yeah. And it's just, for some reason, it just becomes a natural thing for me. That's awesome. And, or with Rob. Yeah. Hey, how the hell did you just turn that on? Like, you look like you're a quiet dude. I'm like, I don't know, bro. Like, I, I just, it's just off the cuff. And, uh, 
it's it's just it just flows now and that's why i think like i think i would be great on another episode or another tv show yeah you know because now i've learned i've learned i've learned a bunch of things yeah you know being on tv then being off tv and now thinking back of what i could have done better and uh yeah i truly think that i could uh be a valuable member to a lot of different shows. Absolutely. And I've done commercials too. Yeah. And then I was talking about Compton earlier. I actually did a pilot show with another Hemi thing. Oh yeah. For Hoonigan out in Compton, California. Yeah. And that was, it was like a, a Hemi and a Rolls Royce, like big old 4,500 <laughs> pound drifter yeah. Rolls Royce. Yeah. And uh, I don't, it was with uh, 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 Scotto, uh, I forget his first name. Uh, I think that's his last name, the main guy of Hoonigan. Gotcha. Um, and then it was somebody, I, I'm terrible with names. Yeah. Brian Scotto, that's, that's who it is. He's the, he's the main producer of all the uh, Hoonigan, and uh, uh, I guess it's Jimmy Connor. What, what, is the, what is the Ken Block cars? <sighs> Jim Connor. Yeah, Jim Connor, Jim yeah, Connor yeah, yeah. stuff yeah. that he's done, and then the one with Travis Pastrana and stuff like that. Uh, he's the main producer of all of it, and uh, the shop was pretty awesome. Yeah. And never been to California. Yeah. And Compton, California is pretty trippy because, like, you go to the airport, and first of all, you hear all negative things about Compton, right? Yeah. And I'm sure it's getting better now. And uh, but you go to the airport, and most airports you go, the baggage claim is inside and protected cameras the whole nine yards. Compton, California, you walk out of the airport and it's outside. So what? yeah, I went there. That's wild. I went there and I had thousands of dollars worth of equipment with me because of what we were doing there. Yeah. And yeah, it comes flowing out and anybody could just walk up there and take it. And uh, you know, there's some security, but come on now. That's Not like crazy. what an airport is you're you're used to. Your now baggage that was years outside. It might be different yeah. nowadays. And I don't remember what airline I was on. Yeah. But yeah, Compton, California Airport, the baggage claim was outside. Now I, I thought that was trippy. Yeah, that it, that would be trippy. Yeah, and I, I was like, I, I was like, what about? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was, I was real because I had to check everything that I had. Yeah. Because it's you know the TSA, you know, you can't have a screwdriver, you know. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, rightfully so. Okay, but um, yeah, that was a trip, and I was like, wow, you check it in inside, but <laughs> your bags are coming out to shoot <laughs> outside. So. Well. Yeah. John, it has been an absolute pleasure yeah, having you been, on. Yeah, it's been real talking. fun. I mean, we've been talking for hours. Yeah, <laughs> it's been fun. Uh, I hope I do more of these. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, you know, I've got a whole lot more to the story. Yeah, um, we'll stay in contact. Have you back on for uh, yeah, no. a round two? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, <clears throat> totally down. You know, I'd like to do more of these. And uh, uh, with the uh, YouTuber that I was working with yesterday. You know, I think I'll, uh, I'm, my shop is actually working with a YouTuber named Demonology. His name is Herman. We're building his car. He's a, he's a 100K plus, I think, YouTuber. Yeah. He just, uh, we promoted his event where he went drag racing against... Um, Dunk, <sighs> uh, Dunk Master? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, we're working with him That's now. That's awesome. And uh, That's awesome. I did a, a reveal uh, with him and his Whipple Supercharger and... Uh, even he was like, damn, you turned it on. Yeah. You know? And so cool. I think I have a future in this, be on this side of the camera. Yeah. I love the technology and the audio and stuff on that side of the camera, but I would, I, reality TV, I think, uh, or even big screen, you know, I don't know. I, I can, I can learn how to act. You know, <laughs> 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 you know I can, uh, uh, I'm not much of a crier, but I'll figure out how to yeah, cry on cue. You know. <laughs> But yeah, I appreciate well, you uh, inviting me here. Yeah, I'm absolutely, glad man. you uh, glad you know. In Rob's post, I was like, yeah, I want to do that, and you're like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's, and I mean, absolutely. A couple man. weeks later, you've been pretty booked, which is awesome yeah. for you. Yeah. And uh, man, this has been awesome. You yeah, know, I love talking, been, especially talking about cars. Definitely. Uh, a a good lot time. of people, I think, uh, you know, this facility is actually pretty badass, purpose built. You like it? Yeah. I like it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I definitely like it. The outside is pretty tricked out. You know, yeah. the electric gate. Oh yeah. When. Uh, when I was coming up, I was like, all right, I don't know where to go because there's no markings. Nope. But there's a flagpole. Yeah. So, I always tell people the flagpole. Yeah. I always tell people yeah. the flagpole. As yeah. long as they enter the right alley, we've had people on the other side of the alley. Well, that's where alley. I was because yeah. you were like, oh, it's in the back and this yeah. and that. I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. And I, I, I remember other podcasts, so I'm looking for the color right. of the fence. Right. And I'm like, yeah, that fence looks electric. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great time. I appreciated everything. Um, 
Didn't think I could talk this long, but hey, here we are. Yeah, we're, we can probably closing. go for another couple of hours. Oh yeah, we can go. You know, I I uh, got a lot of story to tell. Yeah. So uh, and I, I definitely have I to love have you back, man. I love the questions. Yeah. Um and yeah, uh, I think anybody who's watching this, you know, they need to. Uh, if you're interested, uh, if you want to talk talk car, talk tailpipe. Yeah. This is where you need to come because, you know, I know this is episode 11, right? 11, yeah. So 11's a, 11's a pretty lucky number. Yeah. Right? For me, anyway, there's a story behind it. Maybe I'll talk about 11. Tell us, definitely. You got to Another tell us time. About it. But, um, yeah, this was a great, great experience. Yeah, well, you know, I'm glad I, you had a good time. I had a good time. Yeah. I enjoyed checking out the truck for sure. It's always a great experience. Yeah, hearing, hopefully next hearing time. Hearing people's stories and stuff. Yeah, so hopefully awesome. next time I'll have the other one. You yeah, know, that the, would be the, cool. I, 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 I really back with the other one. I really like the gray. Yeah. I really like the gray and the gray and the black two tone. But uh, blue is my color. Yeah. And uh, if I'm excited uh, to see it. If people would come out and stop price gouging, I'd have it already. Yeah. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Plus, it's been hard to find a blue one in the in the the trim levels that I want. Gotcha. So gotcha. this gray one came available. Yeah. I bought it in Bonham, Texas at Bonham Dodge. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they did me good. Pretty good. Good, good, good. So. Well, thank you again, man. I appreciate yeah, I, it. I appreciate it. I, I had a blast. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Hope you've enjoyed our podcast. If you'd like to watch the video version and see the details of John's T-Rex, make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Texas Show Promoters. Join our other 80,000 supporters and follow, subscribe, and like Texas Show Promoters on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and now on TikTok. If you have a custom vehicle, like John said, and you want to be on Tailpipe Talk, reach out to us. We would love to hear your story. Take care, guys. Bye.